finance the purchase of the those assets, one thousand worth of asset. Forty percent is that sixty percent of equity. So that's why that is four hundred and equity six hundred. So what's the company? So so that's how this company is uh, financed this asset. And Using these assets, what did this company do? So this company generated a revenue of 2000 and for this to support that revenue, there was uh, 1600 worth of cost, so net income was 400. So this is a simple balance sheet and income statement. So in the previous chapter, what you learned is how to use these um, numbers in financial statements to do some evaluation. So as a quick review, you may, yeah, I may uh, let me ask you a simple question. So what was the profit margin of this company, this coffee company? Anyone? What was the profit margin of this company? Percent, in terms of percentage. Can anyone write down the what was the profit margin of this company? Yeah, let me, I see someone wrote that in the chat box. So let me open the chat box. Yeah, Jackie, yes, 20% is the correct answer. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, why 20%? Because 400 down, uh, property margin de de definition is 400. Uh, property margin definition is net income divided by said revenue. So 400 divided by 2000 is 20%. Yes. So uh, this is how to apply the ratio analysis concept. So 20% profit, it's good. It's okay. For a coffee company. Yeah, that, that's quite good. So using this Information. information so, so we can, can you can, can also calculate total asset turnover debt equity ratio so etc et so that's, that's what, what you learned in the previous uh, chapter so how we are going to use this uh, a simple example to learn um, how to do the planning for the future so before, before I, show I show you the, the next, next slide, slide try, try to think about it. So, so if, 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 if you are the CFO of this company, coffee company, company and, and if your, your boss, boss, the CEO, the CEO asks you to prepare a pro forma balance sheet and income statement for next year. So it's a pro forma uh, income statement is forecast here, income statement for the future. So for the next year, so this is the most, you are looking at the most recent historical income statement and balance sheet. If your boss asks you to prepare a pro forma balance sheet and income statement for next year, making predictions for planning, for planning purposes, what are you gonna do? So that's my question. So just take a moment to think about how to prepare a pro forma income statement and balance sheet for this company for next year. So what are you gonna do? So first you need to do, start with income statements. So next year is a business. So what's the most important, what's the first number you should start with when you make a forecast for next year? So this coffee company's um, business for next year. So I see another chat reaction. So yes, yes. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, sales, yes. The, to make the prediction, that's right. We should start with the forecasting sales. So if your boss CEO asked you, the CFO, to make pro forma income statement for next year, you should ask your boss. Then what is our goal, sales goal for the next year? So this is the CEO's responsibility to answer this question because he asked you to prepare a performance income statement 
and you should know what your boss to call for sales goal for next year. And suppose the CEO told you that, okay, our goal is to make our sales revenue grow at 15%. And, and then that's a clear goal. So that you should start with this. So, so this is the assumption. What if the sales goal, we can achieve the sales goal of 15% sales growth. So based on this assumption, so this is an initial assumption. Nobody can tell for sure what will be the actual sales, but at least that's the goal of the company. Sales increase or at 15% for the next fiscal year is the goal. If that's the case, based on this assumption, you start preparing performa income statement using your knowledge. And this chapter, this slide, uh, this, this chapter is trying to teach you how to do it based on this assumption. So this company's revenue was 2000. And so next year's revenue, if it grows at 15%, 2000 multiplied by one plus of 15% growth. So that's 2300. So that's the revenue for the performa income statement. And how about cost? So, so what's, what's the, the most, most natural thought about the cost when in, uh, say, uh, uh, sales increases by at 15%? So the simplest case is yes, when sales grow, costs also grow at the same rate. So this in this a simple example, we assume that all items are tied directly to sales and uh, the current relationship, current ratio, uh, the current, uh, this, this sales and other uh, cost relationship is the most optimal. So we start with this simple case. So sales grow at 15%, so costs also grow at 15%. So we get the previous year's cost, 1,600 multiplied by 1 plus 15 percent, that is 1,480. So we have revenue, we have cost, so here is net income, 460. So any questions so far? All right, so now you have a very simple Performa income statement for this simple case. And my next question is, can you make a performa balance sheet in this simple case? Yeah, you should be able to. But here, there is a very important point. You need to make another assumption. I, in this case, on a, a one decision when you make a balance sheet. So that's why we have two cases to explain that. So my point is, so that decision is related to this number. So net income. So according to your performer income statement, net income next year will be 460. So that part is clear. But what I'm trying to explain using the next slide is what are you gonna do to do with this 460 net income net year? Will do you wanna make this company's equity value, which was 600 last year. Do you want to make this equity also growing at 15%? If that's the case, so that's case one. So if you want to make equity grow at 15%, that means from 600 multiplied by 1 plus 15%, that's 690. So equity needs to grow by 90. So that means 
out of 460 net income, 90 will be uh, used as retained earnings so that equity will go up. So the remainder, 370, will be paid out as dividend. So in other words, out of 460 net income generated, how to split that 460 between dividend and retained earning, that's the company's decision. So if you are the CFO, it's your decision. You are in charge of making that capital structure and dividend payout decision. So this case one is showing that what if your decision as the CFO is to make equity also grow at 15% then new equity value will be 690 and uh, equity will grow at 15%. At, at that will also grow at 15% in this case because everything else is growing at 15%. That means asset will grow at 15%. So that means asset is growing at 15%. And your decision is to make equity growing at 15% as well, then you don't have any actual choice. Balance sheet should balance. So that means that should also grow at 15% as well. So this is the performer balance sheet for this case. So that means so you May the equity grow at 15%, that means dividends are the plug variable in this situation. So plug variable in uh, financial planning for corporations mean that it's your decision variable. CFO decides this variable and that's related to capital structure and dividend payout decisions. And but I'm showing you another case because you don't have to, as the CFO, you don't have to make dividends the plug-in variable. You can choose to make that, the amount of that, the plug variable. So if you decide to make that is the plug variable, and if you don't want to pay out any dividends, and if you want to recycle, all of 460 net income reinvested to support the growth, further growth for the company in the future, or to reduce that. It's your, it's your company's decision during the uh, financial planning process. So this case too is trying to explain you that kind of different decision of the company that's possible. So, out of, um, if in case number two, if that is the plug variable and no dividends are paid, so, uh, no dividends are paid, or I, um, uh, in this case number two, in this specific case, uh, actually, uh, the, Growth was not the, the purpose of not paying dividend. In this case, 460 was used to reduce that. So changing capital structure. So what if this company decided to uh, pay off that is uh, using uh, 460 net income generated next year, and then that will reduce uh that so that will be 90. okay so that will be 90. okay All right. Let me find. Uh, 
better and way to explain this. Of this. So historical, this gourmet coffee. Or, or yeah, pro forma income statement. And next, balance sheet had a debt of 400, EQT 600. And next, in the second case, EQT will increase because of the uh, not paying dividend and uh, EQT. Uh, so debt should, EQT will increase by 460 because there is no dividend. So balance sheet should balance. So as in this uh, example, everything else is growing at 15%. So asset will grow at 15%. So that should be 90, only 90. So in this simple example. But don't worry. In the next more complicated example, we will have different examples. So, so this, in, in this example, example uh, this debt should only be 90. So uh, repayment, there, there should be a uh, debt level, original debt level was 400, but new debt level should only be 90. So as the CFO, if your company's decision is to use this kind of case too, then uh, there will be Mm, repayment in debt. So under this uh, asset growing at 15%, that kind of assumption, that kind of case. So any questions so far? So we just apply the simple principle. We start with uh, when we make a long-term planning. So let me take a look. There seems to be a question. Yeah. Okay, okay, the, the repayment, repayment part, part is a little, little confusing. So that, thank, thank you. you. Uh, mm. okay. okay, so I will see. I see yeah, other questions. Yeah, the credit on Monday will, main focus will be on chapter three. Okay? And, and but chapter three concept and chapter four concept are Related. For example, we are using chapter four's uh, uh, ratios in, in chapter three's ratio. So focus on chapter three, but there may be some relation between chapter three and four. So it will be good to uh, study, but the main focus should be on chapter three uh, in the Kundu Kresh. So let me take the time to, so it looks like uh, the repayment part may be a little confusing, so let me uh, make it more clear, spend more time to explain that. So in this example, so we are looking at in, uh, in this example in slide number nine, we are looking at a case of this coffee company The growth under, under the, the assumption, assumption of sales will grow at 15%. And all other costs and all assets grow at 15%. That's the fixed um, assumption. Under this assumption, as, so that means asset started with 1,000, and asset will grow at 15% to be 1,150. And here is one decision under that 15% gross assumption. What we are going to do with net income? So how much dividend we want to pay? So this company wants to pay. So as the GFO, it's your decision. And you, you have choices, in other words, regarding how much debt that company will have. So. We, you we have, have definitely more, more than, than two choices, choices uh, but we cannot cover 100 choices, choices in this uh, uh, example. So, so I'm, I'm just, just giving you two choices as an example. example. If, if you understand, understand these two choices, choices you, can you can easily add more, more choices. choices. Oh, the company, the company can, can decide, decide this way, this way. So, so just, just a, uh, come for, for convenience, convenience I, I present there are two choices. So first choice, is 
uh, maintaining the debt and equity. So ma ma la ma making debt and equity also grow at 15%. So that's the first case and it's straightforward. What's the second case? The second case is don't pay dividend and use the net income, over net income to pay that. If not, the company's decision how to make the balance sheet. So that's the case. So, so in, in this case, that is the plug variable. So no dividends are paid. So if that's the company's decision, what will be the new debt level? Because asset level is already fixed to be 1150. So, and the equity level start with with 600 and this company had an additional income net income during the next year and nothing will be go out going out as dividends so that means new equity level will be this high so that means to balance the balance sheet uh, uh, that should be 90 instead of 460. So that's, that's why, why uh, how can I make it go down? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's why, why uh, the company's original debt was 400, but new debt level should be 90. So the difference 310 should be paid back. So like a, uh, paying the loan, something like that. Is it clear? Do you have any other questions? I don't see any other questions, so let me uh, move forward. All right. So in this percentage of sales approach, so this is a kind of recap on what you have learned so far. Maybe. So percentage of sales approach, we start with uh, making a forecast about sales growth. And no, 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 in this uh, previous example, we started uh, with uh, making other items growing at the same percentage, but now we are moving on to a more complicated example. We start taking a closer look. Is that the valid assumption? Should we make a different assumption? That's what I wrote here. So in income statements, in the previous example, we made a cost very directly with the sales. So in the previous example, 15% gross assumption for everything. But so if it, this is the case, profit margin of this company started with 20% will apply to the new performance statement as well. But to be prepared for a more complicated cases, uh, you need to think about what's the problem of this kind of approach. Because there are items, depreciation, for example, and interest expenses will not necessarily grow at 15% when sales grow at 15%. So if that's the case, if there are uh, items that's not growing at the same 15%, if that's the case, profit margins will not be the same, and we need to make a different. Uh, we need to uh, do the calculation in a different way. So that's why we have another example, toy company example. So we will get there soon. So before we move on, let's take a look at other issues. So first, income in income statement. We start with, uh, when we prepare pro forma financial statement, we start with income statement, sales forecast, sales growth rate, but we just talked about that. Uh, some costs may vary directly with the sales, but there may be other items that's not varying, so we are going to discuss this soon. But what about balance sheet? In the previous simple example, we assumed that all assets, in the previous simple example, we assumed that all assets, including fixed assets, grow directly with sales. But in the real world, that may not be the case. That's why we are going to talk about it later in the next example. 
Until I finish this numerical examples. After the numerical examples, this uh, this complicated concept hopefully become more clear. So let's take a look at this more complicated case, toy company. So you are looking at the income statement of this toy company. So in this toy company. Income left hand side is the income statement for the most recent uh, fiscal year. So, income statement, historical income statement for the most recent year. Right hand side is a pro forma income statement, meaning that forecast. So, take a closer look at this data. So, this toy company's historical income statement shows that sales was 5,000. And cost was 3,500, meaning that cost was the was 70 percent of sales. So earnings before tax was 1,500. So meaning that 30 percent of sales was earnings uh, before tax, and tax rate was 21 percent. Average tax rate was 21 percent of earnings before tax, so which is 315. So uh, uh, in, uh, in terms, terms of percent of sale, la taxage was 6.3%. Uh, so the net income was 23.7%. So net income 1,185. Out of that, dividend was 474. And retain uh, the earning the rest, was the rest, 711. So, so if you calculate the ratio of Dividend divided by net income, it's 40%. So this company had a dividend paid out ratio of 40%. And what if you are the CFO now of this toy company? And what if your boss, the CEO, asks you to prepare an income statement, pro forma income statement for this toy company for next year and telling you that Please assume that our sales goal is uh, increasing sales at a fifteen uh, at a ten percent rate. So assume, please assume ten percent sales growth, and then prepare an income statement for next year. So what are you gonna do? And then what should be the sales in the uh, pro forma income statement? Last year's value was five thousand. And gross rate is 10%. So 10% of 5,000 is 500. So that's why pro forma sales is 5,500. And how what about gross? So gross, uh, what about cost? Cost, 70% of sales, meaning that's growing at 10% as well. So EBIT, tax, Net income, so 
how so, so that income, income is calculated, calculated based on that cost is also, also growing yeah. at uh, 10 percent so, so taxes, taxes same thing so net income, income you can calculate but next how to divide the net income between dividends and retained earnings there it's another, another decision, decision point because, because the dividing net income, income between dividends and retained earnings, as I mentioned before in the previous simple example, it's the company's decision. She has capital structure and dividend payment decision. So we make another assumption here about the decision. What if the company decides to maintain the payout ratio to be 40% as just, just like last year? So this, this dividend, is calculated based on that. So dividend payout ratio stays the same at 40%. So this is uh, 521 is 40% of previous one. So you subtract this 40% from the net income, you get retained earnings number. So this, based on these two assumptions, you can easily calculate the pro forma uh, income statement items. Any, Any questions, questions so far? No? Okay, good. Now we move on to balance sheet. So how can you calculate the pro forma balance sheet for this toy company based on these two assumptions? Sales growth 10% and dividend payout ratio 40%. So the left-hand side of each uh, uh, has the historical assets and historical liability and equity and pro forma column added to uh, prepare for pro forma balance sheet. So the, uh, the historical number percentage of sales is already given, so you don't have to worry about it. But take a closer look at this uh, historical part of balance sheet asset. So here, uh, all, all items, items were displayed, displayed all uh, items, items of assets were uh, displayed uh, as a percent of sales. So you remember the this toy company sale, sales was uh, 5,000 in the historical income statement. So in the historical balance sheet, uh, cash, current asset, cash part of current asset was 500, meaning that it was 10% it was of sales. Account receivable was 40%, inventory 80%. So uh, net uh, property, plant, and equipment, 100% uh, of sales. So you do this calculation, and you do the same calculation for liability and equity. So the most recent Balance sheet shows that accounting to payable was 900 and note payable 2500. So account to payable 900. What's the percentage in terms of sales? So sales was 5000. So 18% was account to payable. But why do I write uh, NA not available? Not, not applicable to other items because not payable. It's, it's kind of a short-term debt. Is it directly related to uh, sales? Account payable is related to sales. So how much the uh, credit sales collected? So it will vary with uh, sales. But not payable is like short-term borrowing from. Uh, the bank, the something, something like, like that. that. So, so it may directly vary with uh, sales growth. So, so that's why I make it uh, not, not applicable. applicable. So, so these, these these items may vary. vary. So, so in the similar, similar reasoning, long term debt. How much long term borrowing the company will have? Not necessarily increase or decrease with the sales. So, so same, same, same are reasoning. So all the other items, not very. So that's why in this slide, in this pro forma balance sheet, all right, 
account payable will grow at 10%, but other items doesn't have to grow. So let's use his last year's number. If you don't make any changes, other items will stay the same. So 2,500, but because of this increase, this will increase. But it's one exception. This will change. So can anyone tell why retained earning will change from 3,100 to 3,882 in this example? If there is anyone can, uh, who can explain why retained earnings should increase from 3,100 to 3,882. That means increase by 782. If anyone can explain it, that means that student is understanding, they have a very good sense of how to prepare pro forma balance sheet for long-term planning. So let me wait a moment to see who can explain why retained earning should grow by 782 in this example. Anyone? Yeah, I understand. This is a difficult uh, example. The answer is why this uh, retained earnings should increase by 782? The answer was in the previous slide, pro forma income statement, that number, according to this pro forma income statement, addition to retained earning was 782. Why? Because dividend payout ratio was assumed to be fixed at 40%. So that's why 40% of net income is dividend, so remaining 60% is retained earning, and that should increase retained earning by 782. So any questions so far? So this is a very challenging but interesting and important concept. And I hope you understand. So I don't see any questions, so let me continue. And then after you uh, write the number and do the calculation, let's take a closer look. Based on reasoning so far, there is a big problem. Do you see a big problem here? So in the pro forma income statement, liability plus equity is 12,372. But in the asset size of the balance sheet, it's 12,650. So, the balance sheet don't balance. The professional, uh, the pro forma balance sheet does not balance. That's a huge problem for the CFO. So you should do something to fix that issue. So how to fix that issue? In other words, for planning for next year, if the company is successfully uh, increasing the sales by 10%, under this scenario and this, the company will need more asset, has, will have more asset, they need more asset that's supported by financing side, liability and equity. So that means external financing is needed under this scenario. So that's why I wrote here, 278, so asset side, Total is 12,650. But liability and equity side, the total is smaller. So 278 gap, that should be filled. So that we call external financing need. So EFN is external financing need. So how can a company CFO meet the expected external financing need. There are several ways. The company may decide to borrow more, so increase note payable, or borrow more long-term, increasing long-term debt, or issue more stocks, so sell more stocks, and to boost 
common stock and additional paid in capital. So that selling stock is a way to increase uh, capital. So external financing can be both short-term debt, long-term debt, and stock. Or to fix this issue, the company may decide to decrease dividend payout instead of paying 40%, paying out 40%, reducing the payout ratio to boost uh, retain the earning part further to make the balance sheet balance. So that's, so based on that kind of uh, assumption, we see that. So 40 per, maintaining 40% payout ratio causes a balance sheet imbalance issue. So that raises external financial need situation. Any, Any questions, questions so far? No, then let, let me move, move on. So, uh, so, so this, this was, was the second, second case, case, but I'm introducing, introducing this third, uh, this slide, I'm introducing another example. So, so you, you, we use, use the same toy company situation. The, what if the, the toy, toy uh, another, uh, uh, example in this slide is oh in previous in the previous toy company example we assumed that fixed asset let me go back fixed asset also grows at 10 percent so previous fixed asset was one five thousand and when sales grow 10 percent uh new fixed asset is growing at uh, 10 percent and it becomes 5500 yeah so if the fixed asset can be growing like this that's uh, when we and also when the dividend payout ratio is 40 percent we had external financial need and we uh, address the question using different uh tools but the the last slide in this numerical example i'm presenting is uh, what if, if this company, company had excess capacity? capacity. So, so this company's equipment production facility was not making toys at full capacity. capacity. That means there, there was additional room for making more products. In that case, this company doesn't have to increase fixed asset because there were some capacity idling. So that in that case, do we still have an external financing need in this situation? The answer may be no. So that's what I'm explaining here. So what if this company is currently, toy company is currently operating at 80, only 80% 80 capacity. So 5,000 sales is what only 80% of the capacity. That means the total capacity for the equipment of this toy company is 6,250. So in that case, the company needs to buy more, doesn't need to buy additional assets to support sales growth. So estimated sales, 5,500 is still below the capacity. So in that case, the total asset will be only 12,150, 12,150. So in this, going back to this, so in the pre pro forma uh, balance sheet, Instead of 12, uh, 650, we, uh, if the company has excess capacity, it will only, it will remain at 5,000. So 7,150 plus 5,000 instead of 5,500. So 12,150, not 12,650 with the total asset. So that's what I wrote here. So current asset plus Fixed asset stays the same if there was excess capacity. So, uh, pro forma total asset is 12,150 instead of 12,650. And this balance sheet uh, size, this doesn't change whether this company has excess capacity or not. So, 12,372 stays the same, but SSI is smaller, so now SSI liability and equity side 
still not imbalanced, imbalance, so that's, that's a problem, problem but different problem. problem. Now, now this is it's smaller, SSI is smaller, SSI is smaller liability and equity side is larger. So how to fix this imbalance issue in this case of uh, excess capacity? So that means this should go down by 222. So instead of external financing need, we have excess financing issue. That means this excess financing of 222 should be returned to the investors to make liability and equity part going down to balance the asset side. So how to return the capital to investors? So many ways. So the company may decide to repay some of their short-term debt by decreasing notes payable, pay only, or may repay some long-term debt. So bring the money to the bank and deposit and reduce the debt. 222 can be used that way. Or some buying back some stock. So these days we see a stock repurchase buy back everywhere. So the company can buy back and reduce equity. Or the company may decide to make more dividend payment. So Instead of a 40% dividend payout ratio, a company may increase the payout ratio higher to make it higher and reduce uh, equity account. Or another way is just to simply add 222 excess financing to the cash side. So put it in the checking account and make the current asset cash part go up to balance the Balance sheet. So there are many choices. So we finished this numerical example about long term uh, uh, financial planning and how to prepare pro forma uh, income statement and balance sheet based on sales growth assumptions and other decisions. Any questions so far? Okay. And then we move on. So how what will be the profit next year or for a company you are learning so what will be the sales grow sales and what will be the profit so based on uh, your prediction your uh financial planning start with sales growth assumption and you prepare a pro forma income statement you see what will be the net income next year and uh, predicting forecasting net income for next year from it's a very important task for not just for management cfo ceo it's also a very important question about for analysts and investors on wall street as well so that's why we see earnings forecast everywhere and even, Even finance, finance yahoo.com yahoo. provides some forecast data, data provided by analysts, but, but definitely, definitely as a college student, student Brooklyn, Brooklyn College, you locally as a, at a Brooklyn College, we have better source, more accurate source of high quality data, which is Bloomberg Terminal. So Bloomberg Terminal provides earnings and estimates function. Uh, so, so there are many, many professional, professional analysts analyzing companies, important companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, 3M. So all those companies are covered by well now uh, uh, analysts, and their one of the most important jobs is to forecast earnings to make a better prediction about the stock price. So it's a very, the stake is very high, trillions of dollars. So that's why there are many professional analysts to analyze the company and try to prepare pro forma balance sheet income statement to predict uh, future profits and because it's directly related to the stock price. So finance students, and accounting students are going to take uh, additional finance courses like investment courses. So they will learn this kind of more sophisticated concept later on. But at least in this class that you are taking in this class, you get 
some kind of premium, right? Any questions so far? Let me take a moment to, yeah. Before we move on, yeah, yeah let, let me, me take a, like a one minute break, break so, so that I can, can take the screenshot to make sure that uh, I take your um, attendance without, without any issue. Professor? Uh huh. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, my, my other device, device was kicking me out, out and so uh -huh. I had to switch devices and okay. have and you. You let, let me back, back in, in, and on, on this device, device my, my name, name isn't, isn't correct. correct. But, but when I originally... So what's your name? It's Jordan Roderer. Okay, Jordan Roderer. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, now I mark your... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry about, about that. that. Yeah, yeah I'll make okay. sure yeah, that it's right on all devices. Yeah, okay. it's okay. And, yeah, yeah thank, thank you, Jordan. You. So, so is there any other student who is, uh, whose name is not properly displaying? That, that student, student should write, write uh, their name on the chat box. box. If your name is being displayed correctly, you don't have to write. But so, so I take, take a screenshot and as well as I save the Zoom chat box. So yeah, you you, you should, should have some, some kind of record of your attendance. If you, your name is not being displayed correctly. So I'm taking this one minute break to take the screen charge to, for attendance, attendance purposes. Okay. I took the screen chat and saved it. And let me also copy the chat box. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Actually, I know, yes, said Chell Thomas. And Catherine, I, I marked, I changed your name, new name on my, um, on my uh, attendance uh, uh, rec, uh, book, so you don't have to. Yeah, I'm aware of that. And Rachel and G. Yes. Yeah. Rachel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me copy the chat box to make sure that later I can uh, review and make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. Good. So far, so good. Okay. Then let me go back. So any other questions? No, then, then we are gonna, if you don't, it looks like you don't have any other questions, so let me go back and finish. All right. So, as you could see from uh, the previous discussion, growth is a very important um, concept for managers, so growth rate of a company's profit and sales, very important for uh, CEOs, CFO, and Wall Street investors. And also, closer uh, rate is closely related to external financial needs. So, if a company is growing at a low level, low has a low growth rate, internal financing, meaning that the company's uh, net income generated by, by current uh, current operations, that internal financing, retained earnings, may see the required investment assets when the growth rate is low. But when growth rate is high, that means the company sales is growing fast, and then the assets should be purchased, and the financing needs is huge, then in that kind of situation, retained earnings will definitely not be enough. So the company should go to the capital market, meaning that need to go to the bank or bond market, stock market to raise more capital. So gross rate financing need closely related. So it's very important for you to examine the relationship between growth rate and external financial need or returning capital. So that's a very important tool, component of uh, planning of a corporation for the future. So we end this uh, chapter with two important growth rates. 
internal growth rate and sustainable growth rate. So internal growth rate and sustainable growth rate, it's very important for you to understand the difference in concept clearly. So internal growth rate is the maximum growth rate based on this no external financing assumption. So in other words, if the company doesn't do any external financing, so, so if, if the, the company, company uses, if, if, if that's, that's the case, what's the only source of growth? Retained earning is the only source of growth. That's why we call this growth rate internal growth rate. So internal growth rate tells you how fast the company can grow if retained earning is the only source of financing. That means no external financing, just internal source of financing, which is retained earning. That's the only source. That means it's very limited. No external financing, just internally generated cash. If that's the only way the company can grow, how fast the company can grow. So as you can tell that all these internal uh, growth rate, it's kind of limited growth rate. So, so assumes that the internal growth rate assumes that the dividend payout ratio is constant. So, so under the assumption of the constant dividend payout ratio and no external financing, what's the maximum growth rate? The formula, you should know that this formula. So internal growth rate formula is return on asset multiplied by retention ratio, which means one minus dividend payout ratio divided by one minus return on asset multiplied by retention ratio. So applying this equation to the toy company uh, numerical example, you can calculate that internal growth rate is 6.59%. So one question is what will happen to the debt equity ratio if a firm relies solely on internally generated funds for financing? The answer is debt equity ratio will go down. If the company uh, relied solely on internally generated funds for growth. The equity ratio will go down. Why? Because the company will keep generating net income. Otherwise, the company will disappear. It will, will go bankrupt. So we are assuming a normal, reasonable company keep generating net income. But if the company decides to uh, Decide not, not to use any external financing, just to use uh, internal financing. That means every year the company will keep generating retained uh, uh, earning. So and but there is no external financing. So that means equity will go up. Will keep going up, but. No, no that so equity proportion will keep growing because there no additional. Uh, outside the fund the coming in, in but internally generated equity will go up. Yeah. So internal growth rate might not be the best growth rate we can estimate. So it's too conservative. So what's the most uh, more uh, reasonable, uh, but some companies have may have that kind of policy. So that's why we calculate internal growth rate. But a more reasonable, more uh, also more common growth rate is, I would say, sustainable growth rate. So by sustainable growth rate, what I mean. So sustainable growth rate is watch the growth rate possible if company keep generating retained earnings, so equity goes up, but to match that level, company borrows more, but to just to maintain the constant debt ratio. So in other words, the company has a target capital structure. Equity versus debt will not, that, that shrink proportion will not be shrinking. 
when and EKT, EKT grows, grows by retained RNA, RNA to match that, that, that is also gro growing. So, so the, the company, company has a target, target leverage, leverage ratio. ratio. If, if that's the company's decision, what's the, the maximum possible growth rate? rate. So, so that's, that's the sustainable growth rate. rate. So, so sustainable, sustainable growth rate assumes that the, the dividend payout, payout is constant, constant also Leverage ratio is also constant. So, so if that's the case, what is the growth rate? So the equation, this is the equation for sustainable growth rate. The equation is very similar to internal growth rate equation. Just one difference. We use return on equity instead of return on asset in, to calculate sustainable growth rate. And you know that which one is always larger? Return on EKT is always larger, unless there is no debt. So in other words, for all EKT companies that does not have any debt, return on asset and return on EKT are the same because there is no debt. So asset is equal to EKT, no debt. In that case, return on asset and return on EKT are the same, but otherwise, any company that has debt, return on EKT is always higher than return on asset. So, so we turn on, on equity, equity, but there, there may be some, some other weird cases, cases bankrupt, bankrupt the companies, but I'm not talking about that kind of weird situation. There's no more well, common cases. So we turn on equity is always higher than we turn on asset. So we turn on equity based growth rate, which is sustainable growth rate, is higher than internal growth rate, which is based on return on asset. And sustainable growth rate is higher than internal growth rate because uh, sustainable, sustainable growth rate allows external financing up to maintaining the leverage ratio. So, important questions. So, it's important to remember that you're working with accounting numbers. So, there are some issues. Uh, when you work with a, a, a planning, when you do planning, you do accounting numbers. So, your long term plan affects the timing and risk of cash flow. So there may be, so when CFOs make this kind of plans, carefully look at if there are any inconsistencies in the plan, just carefully check. So examples that are like, does, uh, do the balance, does the balance sheet balance? So is there any inconsistencies in the assumption? And, and also, also the, the most, most important, important question should be asked during the planning process is, is this plan increasing the value for shareholders? Because they are the owners. So maximizing owner's benefit wealth should be the goal, of, an important goal of financial planning. So let's take a quick moment to uh, Discuss, discuss what so so so, so far we we'll to spend a lot of time uh, to talk about planning and we also learned that growth rate is very important issue so let's take a moment to think about what determines the growth rate of a company so for example sustainable growth rate what do we use to calculate sustainable growth rate four things first Retention ratio. So, retention ratio, higher retention ratio means growth. So, when the more companies retain their earnings and reinvest, they will grow. So, dividend policy, how much payout, the rest is retention. So, payout policy determines the growth rate. So, that's why does Amazon pay dividend? No, rapidly growing companies like Amazon, they don't usually make dividend payments. Why not? Because they have so many new ideas. So rapidly growing companies don't pay dividend. So dividend payout policy determines the growth rate. And what are the three other factors that determine the growth rate? You remember? 
return on equity, the profitability determines the growth. So all else equal, the more profitable a company, they can grow faster because they generate a lot of uh, profits to be reinvested. So profitability affects growth. And that's when you need the dew point identity concept. So there are three things to determine the return on equity. Profit margin, total asset turnover, and financial leverage. Those three things to determine return on equity, profitability. So the higher the profits, operating profits, the more efficient the company in using assets and the more wisely the company use borrowed money, they can grow fast. So that's it. So this is the end. So this, this is a summary uh, slide for the growth rate. So we finished chapter four. I plan to start the chapter five today, but this is uh, because of the complexity of chapter four, I spent more time than I planned, but that's okay. We can make up later. So uh, make sure you finish, uh, complete the um, homeworks on chapter three and also we finished chapter four so you should uh, work on uh, chapter four homeworks as well and we will uh, our quiz uh, we will have a quiz on monday okay so if you don't have any questions you can leave and if you i will stay 